This is our Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon Series 3D printer. It is large in size, it weighs around 23 kilos, and it does not like a humid environment. Now I know what you're going to ask. So why did we get a 3D printer for Paikia? Doesn't sound like a smart choice. And aren't you trying to lighten this boat anyway? Paikia is already a light ship. She weighs eight tons, which is pretty good compared to most modern day catamaran designs. She does, however, have super skinny hulls. This is great for performance sailing, but not so great when you want to live on board. So even at the relatively light weight of eight tons, she still could do with being much lighter. With Paikia as a lighter ship, we could then carry more food, add more to our sail inventory, have a fridge and a freezer, add more solar, carry more toys. Basically, it would give us more options. And this is the main driving factor behind our current interior refit project. In order to sail comfortably with five people living on board, we need to lighten Paikia. And the best way to do that is to replace all of the timber furniture and the floors with foam and fiberglass. You would have already seen in last week's video that this is going to be a lot of work. So why would we buy this large and heavy 3D printer when we are working so hard to get rid of all this weight? Well, let's dive into this week's video and we'll try and explain our thinking behind it. these old starboard rudder which dad built back in Valencia from the 2007 Merrick's Cup boat and here you can see the adjustments it's the back two holes those uh, have uh, threads in them and here this is a carbon filler spa so there's gonna be a main spa that goes there which will go right here you can see the big hole so then this is gonna go straight onto the rudder like so We have a Bamboo Lab X1, is Carbon. that right? Carbon. And we, you just printed this this morning. And would you like to, I will give you, I will tell you where the chocolate biscuits are if you come in and, and help me with this. Because this is our bracket for our, <coughs> I, I was gonna say stinky gem, but it's not stinky gem. Starlink. Our Starlink dish and you've just printed this is your design isn't it? and you've just printed that today are you going to leave it like this or are you going to do a carbon over the outside thingy uh i gotta modify it uh, i gotta make it longer so that it covers 
the exit slot for the wire on the stainless steel tube uh, and we've got to try the uh, Wichimajiga Starlink in there. Just see if it all fits. Yeah, but that's version one. Okay, so this is version, version one, but this is not why I want to make this video. In addition to Starlink mounts, we have this. Do you want to explain what you're doing with this thing? Because I thought this project was shelved, but clearly it's not. Clearly Shane has other plans now. He's got his hands on a 3D printer. These for our rudders. Mm. They definitely make, uh, the, having the 3D printer makes jobs like these a lot easier, a lot more feasible. Um, so, uh, yeah, I had the designs sitting there ready to go for them. I just didn't have the facilities to uh, make them so easy. And now you have. Now these aren't strong enough though to go on the rudders the way they are. So these are rudder winglets. Winglets. I was going to say trim tabs, but that's not correct, right? What's the difference? Um, trim tab has. So if that was our rudder or our dagger board. Trim, tra trim tab would go on the trailing edge and turn this symmetrical section asymmetric by having uh, a flap or tab that... Oh, like an aileron on a wing. Exactly. Of a yeah. plane. Okay, so these... Or a skegged rudder. Or it's, a skegged rudder, exactly. <laughs> it's technically a tab, uh, yeah, trim tab on a... So these are going to go either side of our rudder and they are not strong enough on their own but you are going to use this as the core yep so just like i made the rudder i shaped the foam core to the aerofoil shape and made a hole in it just like this so there's a hole here that's where the main where the little stock will go so there's a piece of carbon rod that goes in there just like our rudder so it's it's a miniature version of our rudder um, but instead of using a foam core we're using a uh, printed plastic PLA core. So this will be lightly sanded and then I'll wrap the glass around it um, and yeah, make it structurally strong in exactly the same way that the rudder was made. It's just a miniature version of. E-glass or carbon? Just E-glass. So <clears throat> each one of these has to be capable of holding 50 kilos. Oh, that's not that much. It is when you're a little piece of plastic. Well, yeah, but I was imagining loads on those winglets of a lot more than 50 kilos. No. Because the stock has to deal with tons. Yeah, but that's sideways. This, so what this does is, let's say this is the, the rudder here, right? Okay, so this is the rudder. When the rudder is turned, we create a high pressure and a low pressure. What, what's, what wants to happen is the high pressure water wants to escape around the bottom of the rudder and go to the low pressure side. And you can pretty obviously guess what's happening here. I'm showing it. That the water wants to go from the high pressure side to the low pressure side, but the winglet won't allow it to. So it's a fence to disallow the water from escaping from one side to the other. And what that does is it slows down because the rudder is moving forwards while that is happening. It creates, as it comes down, this moves forward. It creates a swirling action that comes out the back of the uh, foil, which is called a vortice. And because it's at the tip of it, it's called a tip vortice. So these stop that loss of energy from one side to the other and stop or minimize the tip vortice. The other bonus that we get, because we're only in a 40 foot cat, we're quite short, is we have a lot of pitching where the like boat- Hobby horses. Yeah, like a nose hobby, down, like bum up, horse. you know, yeah. By having these horizontals on here, they are essentially as the boat pitches up and down 
doing this. As it does that, this is aiming to resist the, as, as the bow wants to go up, you can see the angle of attack change. So it actually wants to lift the stern up. As the bow goes down, you can see the angle of attack change. So it pulls the stern down. So these follow and try to actually level the boat out and dampen that pi pitching moment. That would be cool if it can do that. Yeah, it but does it, but it's all size related. And these are primarily there to stop the tip vortices, right? To make my rudder more effective. So that means this is like making the rudder longer because when the water rushes from one side to the other, you lose that much rudder because the water's running the wrong way and the pressure is not working. So essentially this is like <laughs> gluing this to the bottom of the rudder and making the rudder that much longer without the penalty of having a deeper rudder so we can stay in the shallow water. All right, that's, that's an easy way to look at it. There are a few disadvantages though. There's a butt ton of disadvantages. So we're going to have to be very careful about uh, fishing lines and yeah. fishermen and this is a off. this is actually set up to be completely remo removable um, and swappable and trimmable and a bunch of other stuff. So um, we have a situation where we're moving from Barcelona to Valencia, and in Valencia we'll be making new new rudders blades to go on the carbon stocks um i only made one rudder blade in the caribbean um and instead of hand shaping the second one i'm going to cut a mold and um make the rudder blade for that one and i may as well make the one that i made it remove the one i made in the caribbean and make it to a cnc machine molded one rather than my hand shaped one so um, I have the opportunity now to do these, do a small tutu down the coast. We'll be dropping the rudders in and out. Um, so to have a little play with it, it's sort of a perfect opportunity. Now you've got, I know on the old Valencian rudder, you've got the, you built in that carbon tube in the very bottom of the rudder. Yep. To uh, accommodate all this. Yeah. What have you got on the other one that we built and that you built in St. Martin? There's nothing. Nothing. So how are you going to do that? You're going to have to insert a bit of carbon rod or something in there? Um, uh, I'll bodge something together. Yeah. All right. Bodge something together. Yeah. Because the intention is that that blade will be coming off anyway. Yeah, but you don't want to lose your wing wing. I put it on. You put it on. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> All right, and 3D printers weigh a lot of <laughs> kilos, so we're going to have to do some work on the interior in Valencia so that we can actually fit it on board. Yeah, but super cool. Good, it is very cool. Good printer. Um, Amazing printer. Yeah. Uh, and the other project that you've got in the pipeline is patent car ends. Luff receptacles. The Luff receptacle there for you. Yeah. It fits onto the baton cover. Yeah. So they were originally printed by a mate, Greg, uh, out of ABS plastic. And they have lasted us quite a long time. Uh, but crossing the Atlantic to the Caribbean, we had two of them crack and break. Um, and then subsequently made solid glass inserts for those broken ones. And we've sail back so they've done a few thousand miles um the new ones will actually be carbon fiber infill or carbon fiber um, reinforced plastic oh yeah because so we've got that carbon uh, filament yeah so printer we got can print high temperature nylons nylons carbon filled nylons carbon filled plas and all the rest so there are some fairly structural ish structural for a 3d printing world um materials 
So we'll be playing with those to see how viable that really is in the real world. Um, and if it's actually quite viable and, you know, it certainly makes a very expensive receptacle from the normal avenues uh, at a reasonable price where people could possibly print them themselves. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm filming. Well, if I zoom in like that, there we go. That was awesome.